Hello and welcome to this new video workshop for corner to corner blankets knitted with your circular knitting machine with 22 needles. You get the basic pattern for square and rectangle blankets in any size you like. And you get the pattern for the square rainbow blanket and the square squares blanket. So enjoy this workshop, have fun and check the outro for more. For this project you need a circular knitting machine with 22 needles. You can use every circular knitting machine with 22 needles. You need the yarn in the colors of your choice for your project, your working yarn. And you need yarn scraps because we are going to knit the tubes with the use of scrap yarn. In one of the next chapters that's explained if you don't know the one second remove scrap yarn method already. Besides your yarn you need of course your yarn needle. A crochet hook. I like to use the size 5.5 mm. You have to check Google for the same size in your country. And I'm using a pair of scissors of course. So that's all you need. The video is built up in chapters. You can skip chapters if you already are familiar with the techniques there shown. And you can use the pause button and you can speed up or slow down the video with the use of the three little white dots or with the, um, with the gear in the upper corner here. So, hey yo, let's go. First I will explain the basic square and rectangle pattern for a multicolor blanket. We have to wait till Fritz leaves the building. Yes. Okay. Welcome to the explanation of the workshop for a square blanket. And I'm going to explain how you can adjust the pattern into a long rectangular blanket. And I'm going to explain to you how you can make it as long as you like. You are going to knit different tubes and on the go you decide what size your blanket is going to be. So you will see it grow. We are going to knit different sizes tubes in pairs to create the corners and for the intersection we knit one single tube that's the longest tube of all tubes. We knit the tubes with the use of scrap yarn. We are going to knit color blocks. Those blocks are always 17 rows and you knit every tube twice. So you knit all tubes in pairs. And then one tube, just one tube for the intersection. That comes in the middle of our blanket and needs to be one size bigger than our biggest tube. So whatever amount of tubes you are going to use, the biggest tube has to be one size bigger. So in my project, my biggest tube has 13 blocks and is going to be a square blanket. So you are going to knit all tubes, close them up and remove the scrap yarn. When you are not familiar with my one second remove scrap yarn method, see the small workshop in another chapter of this workshop where I will explain how to knit and remove the scrap yarn. And when you have done that, you have to put the yarn tail on the beginning and the end to the inside and cut it. Do that on both sides. And when you have done that with your tubes, I will demonstrate to you how you can see how big your blanket is going to be. So first you have to start knitting your first pair that contains one color block. And then you knit your second pair and that contains three color blocks. The color blocks are always uneven. To make this into a square you need to add a tube with five color blocks. Just one and that makes this 
a small square. When I want to have my square bigger, I star start adding another five square tube and a seven square tube. And now your blanket is again square. So you keep joining pairs and then you knit one tube bigger with two extra color blocks for in the middle of your blanket. And so it's always going to be a square blanket, but every time a little bit bigger when you add another pair. Now you can see that the points are basically the edge of your blanket. And when you want to make a long blanket, a rectangular, you just start with knitting a square that fits your size in width. And then you start adding tubes in the middle that are the same size as your longest single tube of your square. So you start knitting extra long tubes and every time you add one and so your blanket is going to be longer. I'm going to demonstrate it to you on the floor. So I'm going to add a lot of tubes with 13 blocks to make my blanket longer. And since I'm assembling after all the tubes are finished, I can measure on the go till I have enough. So I can make it from a square into a rectangle. For this project we have to knit 13 tubes with the use of the one second remove scrap yarn method as explained in the next chapter. We are going to knit six pairs that are the same and one single tube, that's the tube in the middle of our blanket. The tube contains color blocks and every block is 17 rows long. So we are going to knit two tubes with one color block, two tubes with three color blocks, two tubes with five, two tubes with seven, two tubes with nine, and two tubes with 11 color blocks, and one tube with 13 color blocks. And now I will demonstrate to you the colors. The first pair of tubes contains one color block and I have used gray. If you want to use another color, change all gray blocks I am going to show you. So 17 rows per block for the first pair tubes in gray. Then we have to knit the next pair of tubes and that contains three color blocks of 17 rows white or just 51 rows. So knit two tubes with 51 rows wide. The third pair of tube contains five color blocks, but they are all pink. So five color blocks is 85 rows knitted with pink. And of course, another pair. So knit two tubes with 85 rows. Then the next pair of tubes contains seven color blocks, but those color blocks are all black. So when you have to knit seven color blocks, you have to knit 119 rows in black and use the scrap yarn, of course. Then the next tube contains different color blocks. And we start for that with the color block pink. That's 17 rows. 
Then one color block black. That's 17 rows. Then five color blocks gray. That's 85 rows. Then one color block black. That's 17 rows. And one color block pink. That's also 17 rows. And of course, scrap yarn. So this is a long tube with different colors. And then we have the tube with 11 color blocks. And for that we have to knit different colors. And of course, two tubes. The first color block is white, 17 rows. The second color block is pink, 17 rows. The third color block is black, 17 rows. The fourth color block is gray, 17 rows. Rows. Block fifth, five, six, and seven, three blocks are white. That's also 51 rows together. And then we have row eight, or block eight, 17 rows of gray. Block nine, 17 rows of black. Block 10, 17 rows of pink. And block 11, 17 rows white. And of course, scrap yarn. And knit two of these. And then we have our single tube left. That's the one in the middle. That's a very long one. It contains 13 blocks. And we start with knitting one block gray. So the first one of the single tube, the first block is gray, 17 rows. The second block is white, 17 rows. The third row is pink, 17 rows. The fourth block is black, 17 rows. The fifth block is gray, 17 rows. The sixth one is white, 17 rows. The seventh one is pink, 17 rows. The next one, the eighth one, is white, 17 rows. Block number nine, gray, 17 rows. Number 10, black, 17 rows. Number 11, Pink, 17 rows. Number 12. White, 17 rows. And last but no, not least, number 13. Gray, 17 rows. When you have knitted and closed your tubes, you have to remove the scrap yarn. And then you have to tuck away the yarn tail at the end by just pulling it to the inside like this and then you can cut that tail and do that with all the tails on both sides of all 13 tubes and then you are ready to join them into a blanket And the third pattern is the pattern for the rainbow blanket. For this project we need to knit 13 tubes from small to big and back to small. So we are knitting tubes with the use of scrap yarn or waste yarn. I like to use the one second remove method and close them. You can see how to do that in an next chapter 
And when you have done that, you can simply remove the scrap yarn. And you pull your yarn tail to the inside. And you cut the end. And that's important to do with every tube you knit. You are knitting in blocks of 17 rows. So every tube contains color blocks of 17 rows. The first tube you have to knit is a tube with the use of scrap yarn on both sides. That's for all the tubes the rule. You start and end with scrap yarn. And the first tube you knit 17 rows, one block, purple 17 rows. That's your first tube you knit. The second tube contains three color blocks. You start with red. Of course, scrap yarn. I don't mention that anymore. You always cast on with scrap yarn and cast off with scrap yarn. So the first block, 17 rows red. Second block, 17 rows purple. And the third block, 17 rows blue. That's the second tube. The third tube starts with three blocks purple. Three blocks is three times 17 is 51 rows purple. Then one block blue, 17 rows. And one block green, 17 rows and scrap yarn. That's number three. Number four, you start with one block red, one block purple, 17 rows a block, three blocks blue, that's 51 rows blue, one block green, and one block yellow. Number five, you start with three blocks, 51 rows purple, one block blue, 17 rows, three blocks green, 51 rows, one block yellow, 17 rows, and one block orange, 17 rows. Number six. You start with 17 rows red and then 17 rows, one block purple, 51 rows, three blocks blue, one block green, three blocks yellow, one block orange and one block red. So it's always 51 or 17. The next tube is a long one. You start with 51 rows purple, 17 rows or one block blue, three blocks green, one block yellow, three blocks orange, one block red and one block purple. And that was the middle tube. We continue and now the tubes will be getting shorter. And you start with three blocks blue, one block green, three blocks yellow, one block orange and you end with three blocks red. The next tube starts with three blocks green, one block yellow, three blocks orange, one block red and one block purple.
next tube three blocks yellow one block orange and three blocks red they're getting shorter the next one three blocks orange one block red one block purple The next one is three blocks red, 51 rows red, nothing else, yes, scrap yarn. And the last one, purple, 17 rows, of course with the scrap yarn, but this one is completely finished off and make sure that the rest will also look like this. And then we can continue joining the tubes to each other and the blanket will be finished before you know it. You have to knit these tubes with the use of scrap yarn. I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can add the scrap yarn and how you can remove it very quick. First I'm going to start to knit with my scrap yarn a couple of rows. And then I'm going to change to another color of scrap yarn. I'm just cutting my yarn, putting it to the inside between the last and the first needle. And then I take another piece of scrap yarn and put it into my feeder, also between the last and the first needle. Make sure that the tails are long enough to reach the table. And knit one round, so every single needle has to pick the color once i'm cutting my yarn and putting my tail between the last and the first needle as every tail i have used and then i'm taking my working yarn i'm hanging a long piece of thread inside my machine because i'm going to use it to pick up my stitches and do whatever i want to do with them I'm going to demonstrate to you how I like to close my tube. But first, you have to put your yarn between the last and the first needle. And then you are going to knit. So what have we done? We have started with scrap yarn, changed to another color and knit one round with scrap yarn. And now I'm just knitting my desired pattern. That's not interesting because that's for a special project. And now I'm finished. I'm cutting my yarn a long piece because I want to use it to close my tube. I'm taking it out of the feeder between the last and the first needle again. And then I'm going to put my scrap yarn into my feeder between the last and the first needle and I'm going to knit one round see just the same place all the time between the last and the first needle one round so every needle just picks the yellow color in this case one time I'm taking it out of the feeder and I'm taking another piece of scrap yarn And I'm going to knit a couple of rounds with, with the scrap yarn. And after knitting a couple of rounds, there are no rules. I'm just cutting my yarn and knitting until my work drops from the machine. So I'm continue cranking when my yarn runs out until my project comes loose. 
Now I'm going to demonstrate how I'm going to close the tube. I'm going to close the tubes with the use of my five and a half millimeter crochet hook. It's five and a half millimeter. You can search for your size in your country. Tubes have two ends, the casting on and the casting off end. And we are going to start with the casting off end. I'm turning the inside to the outside and I'm going to show you the last knitted stitches with my working yarn that are captured between the scrap yarn. And when you put all those ends to the right, you will find your working yarn and you will find those two yarn tails of that single strand row. So those three ends we need. You see that the working yarn is in the middle and the yarn end closest to you goes into the first stitch we need to close the first pair. So I stick my needle through that last stitch and to the first stitch. Look, the working yarn is in the middle and those two yarn tails are coming out of those two stitches. And when you look at the rest of the stitches, you will see that you can line them up easily into pairs. I'm putting my needles into all the pairs so you can see how it looks looks like and this way you can see if you're doing it correct because a tube with 22 stitches has 11 pair stitches so i have to check if i have 11 pair if not i made a mistake with picking up those first pair those first two stitches now I'm putting my needle into my last pair. Those are next to each other, but also in front of each other. And now I have 11 pairs. And I'm ready to close the pairs. So I'm sticking my crochet hook into that first two loops. And I'm taking my working yarn. And with the hook, I'm going to pull the yarn through the two loops. And now I've started closing my tube. I'm going to pick up the next pair, pulling the yarn through all three loops on my hook. From now on, I have three loops on my hook every time I'm going to close a pair. And I'm going to close all 11 pairs. And my last stitch. You always end with a pair. And then I'm pulling my yarn another time through that single loop. And the tube is closed. You have the scrap yarn tails on the right. I'm turning so that my working yarn is on the right. And now I'm going to pull out that single row with scrap yarn. That easy and you can lift off the rest and now this side of your tube, the end is closed. And now we have to close the beginning of the tube and that first stitch is a little bit more difficult to find. The hidden stitch is easy to find but most people make the mistake by not searching for it so they look at the loops and they think that this stitch is the first stitch and this is the opposite stitch but it's not you have to look at where your scrap yarn goes through find the first two loops where the yarn ends of the scrap yarn go through and then you will find that the piece closest to you 
that stitch is a little bit hidden. This is the first stitch and the opposite stitch. And the, the working yarn is in between. And when you're not sure, you are going to count your 11 pairs. Again. Line them up. And my last pair, you always end with a pair. And then you continue closing as we did at the end of the tube, exactly the same way. When you are getting used to this, you don't need all those needles anymore. They are just for learning purpose. And sometimes I make also a mistake and I don't end up with a pair. And when I don't end up with a pair, I made a mistake. So I have to undo the closing by just pulling out those stitches and start over again with finding the real first pair. And then you close it the same way. When you have knitted all your tubes, it's time to assemble them into a blanket. First, you are going to make two half squares. When you have knitted your tubes in different color blocks, assembling is going to be simple because you know exactly where you have to start joining them at what point. So you are going to join them like this color block to color block and that's simple to see where to start. Sometimes it's easier to start at the opposite side when you're making tubes with multiple color blocks of the same color and sometimes you have to count where you have to start because there are no color blocks visible. I'm going to show you how to find that point But first I'm going to explain how we are going to join the tubes to each other without a seam. When you are going to join the tubes, you are going to join them side to side, like this. We are going to use the sides, not the seams. Those are the ends of our tube, but we are going to use the side. And for that we have to look up the V-stitches. A straight line with V-stitches that starts from the corner all the way up. V-stitches that look like this. Sometimes your tube is upside down, it doesn't matter, but you have to find that straight line from the edge all the way up. And you have to follow those tracks when you are going to join them to each other. And we are going to join them by poking into the V-stitch And then you are going to pick up those vertical bars. It looks like a rail track or a train track. And we are going to use that bars on both tubes. And make sure that you always stay on the same track. I made a chart to explain. These are the vertical bars and you start with joining one bar to one bar and then you are continue joining bars in pairs to each other and when needed you end with one bar or maybe with a pair i'm going to demonstrate how to join the tubes to each other starting at another point then at the beginning of both tubes I'm using a contrasting color and that doesn't matter because you will not see it afterwards. First you have to find your straight track and roll it to the edge so you can work it easily. And then you pick up the bars at the color change and you pick up the bar of the old color 
and pull through your yarn. I always leave my yarn without cutting, so I always have enough. And then I'm going to pick up the vertical bars from both tubes. First I start with picking up one bar, just as at this chart. And one bar at the second tube. And then I pull my yarn through, but not all the way. Keep space in between the tubes. And then I go fast forward by picking up two bars. I go in where I came out. I pick up two bars. Make sure you go through the hole and not through the yarn. And then I pick up the next two bars at the other side. You go in where you came out, pick up two bars. And then you continue doing that on the opposite side, picking up two bars. Make sure your yarn does not get tangled. And keep on picking up those vertical bars in the same tracks until you're at the end. It may look that it won't fit, but when you knit it, the rows correct, it will fit. And otherwise, you just simply smuggle. You're allowed to smuggle, then you pick up one bar or three bars. It doesn't matter. When it looks like this, you just pull at your yarn. You can pull at both tails. And I like to be economical, so I just cut my yarn when I'm done. So I'm pulling and joining the tubes to each other. I'm pulling my yarn a little bit back so I don't have to waste a lot. And then I cut my yarn. I will finish up the ends and make sure that the edges will lo look nice. The corners will look nice. But we do that in a next chapter, the finishing off, because we have to assemble first all tubes. In the next step we are going to join tubes where you don't know where to start, like tubes that are just one color. You want to start at the correct point and I'm going to explain to you how you do that. I'm going to use this piece as example, the red purple part. I take a piece of yarn, I leave it on and I put it in my contrasting needle so you can see very well what I'm doing. And I want to join them, but I have to start at the correct point. So first I'm going to find the tracks on the edges. We have knitted 17 rows per block, so we have to count 17 rows for the first block. Every vertical bar counts as one stitch, aka one row. So you have to count to the 18th vertical bar. Stay on track and find that 18th vertical bar by just simply counting them. You can also count the V-stitches, whatever you want. One V-stitch is equal to one row. And when you have found your vertical 18 stitch, your bar, you just pull your yarn through. And then you take your second tube. Make sure you take the right one with the right side on the right point. And start joining that the same way with joining the first vertical bar. And then continue picking up two bars at a time until you come at the end or until you come at the color change. And I will explain how you go through the color change when you come to another color block.
When you come at a point where just one color changes on one tube, you continue with picking up two bars and there is nothing special. So you just keep on continue closing until you come to the next color change where a color change is where there is a change on the two tubes. I'm pulling at my yarn and you will see that that is closed and joined very nice and then I continue joining the tubes until I come at the next change. Now I'm almost here and now I'm going to count my stitches and look what I have got and try to go color by color changing without a big difference between the bars in color and then continue picking up two by two when you have done that little part where you maybe have cheated a little bit but nobody will notice and just continue joining the tubes to each other following the same tracks until you come at the end and then you only have to join them all together the same way for the half and when you have two halves it's time to join them into one and when you have done that it's time to finish off the ends and then it's done so first you have to continue joining all the way to the end all tubes and make sure you join them in the correct way so that you don't have a corner or something in your blanket on a spot you don't want it so i'm almost at the end i go as far as possible and i just pull at my yarn make sure the tension is correct and then I cut my yarn and I continue joining the tubes until it's a triangle and then repeat it for the other half and that goes for all blankets you always make the two halves before putting them together make always sure that you put them together in the correct way and it's time to finish off the ends but when you want to make a longer piece you have to make a third panel made out of the tubes that are all as long as the longest tube of your blanket and then you are going to join them all like this always one step to the right so on one side everything goes to the right and when you look at the other side it's also going to the right up so you join all those even tubes to each other one block further every tube and then you get a straight line that will fit perfect in between the two triangles but first you have to lay them in place to make sure that you add the triangles correct to the longer panel and when you have joined them it's time to finish off the yarn tails finishing off the yarn tails is very simple and the blanket is finished before you know it first it's important that the tension between the tubes is correct put the yarn tail you want to finish off into your yarn needle 
and then you simply are going to stitch the corner to the tube with a simply stitch through the corner and the tube pulling it all together and I like to knot it on the go like this I'm making a little loop twist it like this and put it around my needle but you can use whatever knot you like I pull the yarn close around the needle I keep it together with my thumb make sure I don't burn my finger and pull through the yarn and then it's secured and you can always make a second stitch to be sure and then I'm going to tuck my yarn between the layers I let my needle come out somewhere else I pull through and then I only have to cut the yarn tail and this tail is finished off now I'm going to do that with all the tails all the way around and when, when I'm done my blanket is completely finished you can make your own designs you see it's as simple as a hat keep watching the outro of this video for more information about my free video workshops and keep on knitting thank you for watching with love from holland stay tuned and this is the end of the workshop if you like this workshop please let me know by leaving a comment under the video and giving me a thumb up. Please keep on watching this video to the end, then you can see all kinds of different projects you can make with my free video workshops. In the description of this video you will find a lot of helpful links and also the links to my different types of social media. In the future there will be a second series and a third series with vehicles and also a roadmap blanket and a Christmas train. So stay tuned, join this channel. Stay safe with love from Holland. Bye bye.